worship on this seventh Sunday after Pentecost as we gather together as the people of God to remember once again that we have a God who is with us and who loves us and is with us each day and provides mercy for us. So we take this time as people of God to come together to sing, to pray, to hear his word once again. Our worship services are posted each week at 9 o'clock every Sunday morning and then again on Wednesday evenings at 6.15, a different worship service. Um, so twice a week you're invited to join us with worship. If you would like to download the words of the worship service, they are available on the email that you get reminding you of the worship service, and so you can use that instead of the screens if you would like that. Just a reminder, an exciting reminder, uh, next Wednesday, we will be having parking lot worship once again, just as we did a few weeks ago. It will be again at 6.15, and we, we asked you as last time that you enter on 20th Street um, so that we can have all of the cars come in that way and there will be people there showing you where to park. Um, we also will be having ice cream afterwards and so we're excited about that as well. If the weather is bad and we need to uh, cancel this, we will have that word out by 2 o'clock. And so if there's questionable weather, um, please pay attention and watch by 2 and we will let you know. We've always had wonderful worship and so we are planning on that once again as well. There will also be a video available of Wednesday worship on that Wednesday evening at 6.15 if you're not able to be here. Just a reminder as well, our summer, stu summer stewardship program um, is starting up and uh, we now have about $700, a little bit over that, in summer stewardship and so the scroll is beginning to open. Um, remember we had said for every $800 we'll open it up a decade and so we're almost to that first decade and uh, we encourage you to uh, make an extra gift if you are able through our summer stewardship program. You can just send it in or add it to your check or however you would like to do that. Our goal this year is to collect $8,000, um, one, uh, one for e $800 for each decade of our year. Uh, we also ask that if you or someone that you know, your family is in the hospital or in need of any kind of attention or prayer, please let us know. These days when we're not gathering together makes it a little bit more difficult to keep track of, of people's needs, but we want to know and we want to be there for you. So uh, if you can call and let us know, we would appreciate that very much. Those are the announcements, but let us take a moment now to focus on the God who has called us here as we take this time to prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. Begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of the prophets, call to us today. Call, call us into your ways, ways of love, justice, justice and, and righteousness. God of the poets, remind us again how much you love us. Sing, Sing to us your ways of love, justice, and righteousness. God of the disciples, teach us how to follow you. Teach us your ways of love, justice, and righteousness. God of all creation, help us to know your ways. We gather to hear your call, to sing your praise, to teach each other, to pray and worship as the body of Christ. Let us join together now in this time of confession and forgiveness as well as a call to act. God, you have given us a world rich with diversity, made in your image. We are, we are sorry for not understanding that our truth and reality are not the only truth and reality. You call us to reconciliation and wholeness. We are, we are sorry for the times we assumed others would do the work of reconciliation and haven't done it ourselves. You ask that we love our neighbor. We are sorry for putting limits on your love. You remind us that the fullness of your kingdom is not yet realized. We are sorry for avoiding difficult conversations and perpetuating systems and ideas that continue to divide us. God, who is rich in mercy, forgives our sins and grants us hope for wholeness. This God also calls us to action so that all people who make up the body of Christ may be restored to one another. God of compassion, help us to stand up, 
stand for and stand with those who are harmed and marginalized by unbalanced systems and ideologies. Give us courage to have hard conversations, to live into the discomfort, and to meet with each other without shame or defensiveness for the healing of the world. Forgiven and free, called and sent, let us join God as co-workers for a healed kingdom here on earth. Amen.
faithful God, most merciful judge, you care for your children with the firmness and compassion. By your spirit, nurture us who live in your kingdom, that we may be rooted in the way of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Alright, it is kids time, so come on up to watch for our message this morning. Today I want to show you something. Do you recognize who this is? It's Jesus. Now some of you may think it looks like, or call him, Flat Jesus. I understand last summer, or the one before, some of you colored, probably not on wood, but on paper, uh, a Jesus like this, and you took it with you to different places, wherever you went over the summer. And some of you took pictures, I've seen them around our church building, of how Jesus was with you wherever you go. Today, I want to teach you a new song that's really about that, about how God is with us in whatever we do and wherever we go. It's called, I Like to Chew My Gum with God. And I'm going to say the words, I'll ask you to repeat them after me. I like to chew my gum with God. I like to chew my gum with God. And then six times, we're going to pretend like we're chewing gum. We're going to go... So try that. Good. I like to chew my gum with God. I like to chew my gum with God. And we'll together... That's when I'm feeling, excuse me, when I'm feeling blue. When, when I'm, I'm feeling, feeling blue. blue. Whoa. Whoa. God makes me feel brand new. God, God makes me feel brand new. Yeah. 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 That's why I chew my gum with God. It's a little different. Try that. That's, That's why, why I, I chew my gum, gum with God. God. Okay, I'll sing it for you once. This is how it goes. I like to chew my gum with God. I like to chew my gum with God. When I'm feeling blue, oh, God makes me feel brand new, yeah. That's why I chew my gum with God. Okay, now let's try that together. But before we do, a little disclaimer, because I don't want to get any emails or phone calls or letters from parents or grandparents, you know, saying, you taught my kid to chew with his mouth open. Okay, I'm not, this is just for the song. I'm not encouraging you to chew your gum like a cow. Okay, and gum, 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 okay? Just for the song, it's kind of fun. Right, let's sing it together. I like to chew my gum with God. I like to chew my gum with God. When I'm feeling blue, oh, God makes me feel brand new, yeah. That's why I chew my gum with God. Now, God is with you wherever you go. How many of you in the summertime like to ride bike? Yeah? Hopefully you wear your helmet when you're out riding your bike. When you go riding with your bike, God is there with you. And so this next verse is, I like to ride my bike with God. Pedal, 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 ring, ring, crash. Right, let's try that together. I like to ride my bike with God. Pedal, 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 ring, ring, crash. I like to ride my bike with God. Pedal, 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 ring, ring, crash. When I'm feeling blue, oh, God makes me feel brand new, yeah. I like to ride my bike with God. Pedal, 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 ring, ring, crash. And when we fall, right when we fall or when we crash on our bikes, God is there to pick us up to wipe us off and make us feel better from all the things that we happen in life. We also have a job given to us by God to care for all the plants and all the animals. 
How many of you have a pet at home? I have a pet, a dog named Ginger. And this next verse is, I like to feed our dog with God. And then we go, gobble, gobble, munch, munch, flick. Right? All right, let's try singing that together. I like to feed our dog with God. Gobble, 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 munch, munch, lick. I like to feed our dog with God. Gobble, gobble, munch, munch, lick. When I'm feeling blue, oh, God makes me feel brand new, yeah. That's why I feed our dog with God. Gobble, gobble, munch, munch, lick. Now, God also asks us to care for each other, care for our moms and our dads and grandpas and grandmas, even our brothers and sisters, and for other people. So this next verse is, I like to babysit my brother with God. Wah, wah, wah. Here's a cookie. Let's try that. I like to babysit my brother with God. Wah, 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 wah. Here's a cookie. I like to babysit my brother with God. Wah, 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 wah. Here's a cookie. When I'm feeling blue, whoa, God makes me feel brand new, yeah. That's why I babysit my brother with God. Wah, 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 wah. Here's a cookie. As disciples of Jesus, we are to live with God each day. We are to live with other people of God, the family of God. We are to hear God's word and worship. We are to share God's word and good news with others. We are to serve other people. And we are to strive for justice and peace in the world. So this last verse is, I like to live each day with God. Live, hear, share, serve, strive, yeah. A little, that's a lot of words to remember. Let's see if we can do it together. Ready? I like to live each day with God. Live, hear, share, serve, strive. Yeah! I like to live each day with God. Live, hear, share, serve, strive. Yeah! When I'm feeling blue, oh, God makes me feel brand new. Yeah! That's why I live each day with God. Live, hear, share, serve, strive, yeah! Let's chew gum again. I like to chew my gum with God. I like to chew my gum with God. When I'm feeling blue, oh, oh, God makes me feel brand new, yeah. That's why I chew my gum with God. Good job. Before we pray, I want to invite you to stick around for the sermon. Because during the sermon, I'm going to share a story that I think you kids might like as well. But let's pray together and you can repeat after me. Dear God. Dear God. Thanks for being with me each day. Thanks for being with me each day. When I'm feeling blue, when I'm feeling blue, you make me feel brand new. You make me feel brand new. So, so I thank you. I thank you. Amen. Amen. Our psalm is Psalm 86, and we'll read it responsibly. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart to revere your name. I will thank you, O Lord, my God, with all my heart, and glorify your name forevermore. For great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the pit of death. The arrogant rise up against me, O God, and a band of violent people seeks my life. They, they have, have not set, set you before their, their eyes. But you, O oh Lord, are gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger, and full of kindness and truth. Turn, Turn to me and, and have mercy on me. Give your strength to your servant, and save the child of your handmaid. 
Show me a sign of your favor, so that those who hate me may see it and be put to shame, because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. Our second reading is from the book of Romans. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if, in fact, we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation awaits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we are saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be unto you from our God and Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. But today we hear again from the 13th chapter of Matthew. And again we hear another parable about, from Jesus about farming. Last week we heard the parable of the sower. In Matthew's version of Jesus' parable, the sower is Jesus and all his disciples and apostles that sown God's word. And God is the harvester. Today we heard we hear the parable 
of the wheat and the weeds. Then we heard Jesus give an allegorical interpretation of the parable to his disciples, who asked him what the parable meant. Again, in the parable of Jesus and his disciples, him, him and his disciples are the sowers, and God is once again the harvester. Much of Matthew's gospel describes Christians as living in righteousness, yet the parable of the wheat and the weeds warn against our tendency to identify who is evil and who is good. Christ is the judge, not us. In Sundays and Seasons Resource for Worship, Gail Ramshaw says this, Matthew's Gospel knows little compromise, sheep or goats, wheat or weeds, good or evil. Finding the good news of God's love for all people and for all of creation can sometimes be a challenge in Matthew's Gospel. Today's Gospel is no exception. Jesus interprets a parable for the disciples. He announces that all evildoers will be thrown into the furnace of fire while the righteous will shine like the sun. The Son of Man will judge the world. Matthew's phrase, for the kingdom of heaven may be compared to, occurs here in Matthew's Gospel for the first time. Jesus' parable is a genuine metaphor. It is best viewed as a whole, with no point-by-point -point comparison. The kingdom of believers has the same potential as those of the world to do good to do and to do evil. Jesus' allegorical interpretation encourages believers to strive for righteousness, and it emphasizes that God is the judge. Now, according to this parable, it sounds like God is leaving evil in the world. And so a person may ask, are we then lost forever in a hopeless, hopelessly compromised world? Well, the answer is no. The parable continues, or excuse me, contains the promise that in the wisdom of God, the weeds will ultimately be destroyed. Evil is temporary. Only the good endures. God is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, and God will endure forever. In the New Interpreter's Bible, M. Eugene Boring says this, we live in an imperfect world and no human effort can eradicate that fact. But that was never our job anyway. We are given the task of living as faithfully and as obediently as possible, confident that the harvest of God is sure. You see, God is the harvester, the judge not us. We tend to want to judge good from evil, who belongs and who does not, who God loves and who God does not love, who is saved and who is not. But that is not our role. I'd like to share another farm story with you today. This one is by Danette Fritz. It's called Pirates on the Farm. Kids, you might enjoy this story as well. No one ever imagined that five swashbuckling pirates would settle in our proper little southern community. But they did. They traded doubloons for dirt and bought the farm right next door. Joey, my little brother, was delighted. He stopped calling me sis and started calling me matey. Mother was horrified. She rode into town and asked Sheriff Harlow if there were any laws prohibiting pirates from owning land. There weren't, and so she hurried home, took her pine box full of money down from the kitchen cupboard, and hid it under a floorboard. Dad strolled over the hill and helped the pirates unload their trunks. Within a week, the pirates next door had built a new barn. We never seen anything like it. Mother called it disgraceful. Joey begged to walk the plank, and Dad nailed down loose boards, patched a hole on the poop deck, and rescued a piglet 
from the crow's nest chicken. The pirates next door were not clever farmers. They didn't know anything about planting seeds or watering or even milking a cow or riding a horse or harvesting corn or shearing sheep. Dan, however, was an old hand at farming. He worked alongside the pirates as often as he could and gave them his farmer's almanac. The pirates next door lacked social savvy. My whole family was shocked the night we discovered the sea dog definition of dinner invitation. The grub was ghastly, hard tack, crusty cheese, and fish stew. The pirates beamed as Digger scooped a fish head onto each of our plates. Mother screamed. Joey asked if you're supposed to eat the eyeballs. And Dad asked for seconds. Our church has never been as silent as the Sunday the five pirates showed up and plopped themselves down right in the front row. Mother and Mrs. Mayfield began organizing a Ban the Buccaneers brigade. Joey tied on an eye patch. Dad went forward, shook the pirates' hands, and sat down beside them. He didn't change pews when they belted out, yo, ho, ho, as the words to every hymn. And he didn't flinch when they looted the offering. He just added money and passed the plate. When the pirates tried to impress the town's teacher by enrolling in school, the brigade was alarmed. And they were aghast after rogues tried out the merchandise at Mayfield's general store. But the brigade called an emergency meeting after Riverdale's annual Christmas pageant was commandeered by five pirates who did not understand why anyone would put a baby in a feeding trough. In the spirit of the holidays, Joey requested the pleasure of the pirates' company for New Year's Day dinner. It was the first time anyone had invited them anywhere, ever. Mother protested, but Dad insisted. The pirates amazed all of us when they arrived with a parrot for Joey, a one-of-a-kind weather vane for Dad, and a scrimshawed whalebone for me, and a beautifully bejeweled hat pin for Mother. Despite Stretch's tales about seasickness and scurvy, the evening was wonderful until Sheriff Harlow and the brigade arrived with a court order demanding the pirates pay for stolen offerings, runaway livestock, and damages to Mayfield's general store. And if they couldn't pay, the brigade would sell the pirates' farm and set them sailing. But all the pirates' doubloons had been spent on land and livestock, planks and plows and grain, and gifts for their friends. Fortunately, Mother had an idea, and she turned her move away from the Pirates Fund into a fund to pay off their, um, their expenses. Now Mother asks the Pirates to supper every Saturday. She serves delicious scalmundi and bone soup and hard tack. Joey shows off Jolly Roger's latest tricks. Dad and the Pirates discuss the weather before playing spirited games of knuckle bones, and I practiced the art of scrimshaw carving. As for the pirates, dinner invitations are much more civilized, and Reverend Springer often finds surprises like gold doubloons in the offering plate. Pirates train horses, shear sheep, and grow great, gorgeous vegetables, although Dad still supervises the livestock branding. They are successful farmers. Joey howls, maroon the landlubbers for muti mutiny. Mother shakes her head and marvels, who'd have thought? But Dad says, when you plant love, it grows. I'm just glad we're friends with the people next door. You see, when you plant love, it grows. Because of what Jesus has done for us, we can and we should plant love. That is the mission that Jesus has given the church. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And to love your neighbor 
as yourself. God is the harvester and the judge, and will take care of that role. Ralph Waldo Emerson once said, what is a weed? A plant whose virtues have not yet been discovered. Or consider the viewpoint of One Green Plant, an independent online publishing platform that says in nature there are no weeds. All plants have their roles. And if we can start to see the good in our weeds, perhaps they'll be welcome additions, or at least visitors to our gardens. What do you think of that idea that God does not sow weeds? But we do so by our own labels, and then we act accordingly. We label each other in our churches and in society. What and who are weeds and who are not? That is not our role to label each other. For we are both wheat and weed at the same time, saint and sinner. And sometimes people change back and forth in either direction. God will judge who is saved and who is not. Gail Ramshaw also says this in Sundays and Seasons. In Romans chapter 8, Paul focuses on God as a merciful judge. He proclaims that all creation will be freed from decay and receive redemption. Paul reminds us that our hope lies with God, our parent through a spirit of adoption. This dichotomous picture of a God as judge and a giver of mercy began with last Sunday's text and it evidenced itself in the readings from Romans and Matthew across the next four Sundays. The exercise of judgment and mercy reflects God's emphasis on justice over fairness. A fair God condemns those who do evil. A just God moves beyond fairness to justice peace, and reconciliation. As evildoers, sinners, one and all, we are all grateful for God's justice towards us and all people. Psalm 86, verse 15 reminds us, but you, O Lord, are gracious, and full of compassion, slow to anger, and full of kindness and truth. There is hope and good news. We have hope in Jesus Christ, the God that is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and full of kindness and truth. When I or you are feeling blue, God makes us feel brand new. Let us live in that hope daily. Let us continue to plant seeds of God's love everywhere. That is why I plant seeds with God. Because when you plant seeds of love, they grow. Love, grace, hope, and peace. Amen.
supplies for us richly every day. And so we take this time during worship to thank God for all that he has given, to recognize the giver who gives us so generously, and then to consider what it is that we can do to share these gifts that we have with others. So at this time, we encourage you to consider an offering that you can give. If you are a member here at Sharon, um, or even if you are not, you can go to our webpage and uh, click on the link there to our, our uh, online giving and make a gift that way. If you are a member and have envelopes, you can mail those in or you can bring those in and we would be happy to use those for our ministry. We also encourage you, if you're a member of another congregation, to support the ministries of that congregation through your offering. Let us pray. O Lord our God, maker of all things, through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts. With them we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We join together now in confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the Church, the world, and all who are in need. God of the harvest, you sow the good seed of the gospel of Jesus Christ into your field. Help your church throughout the world to be both diligent and patient, full of resolve and gentleness, that our witness may be faithful to your intentions. Open our ears to hear your words of promise and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all space and time, your whole creation groans in labor pains, awaiting the gift of new birth. Renew the earth, sky, and sea, so that all your creation experiences freedom from the bondage of decay. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the nations, teach us your ways, that we may walk in your truth. Mend the fabric of the human family, now torn apart by our fearful and warring ways. Open us to understand the presence and the effects of racism and lead us to listening to and understanding each other, that we might live as one. Guide us by your mercy, your grace, and your steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy, your prayer. God of hope, you accompany those who suffer and, and are near to the brokenhearted. Open our hearts to your children who are lonely and abandoned, who feel trapped by despair, and all who suffer in any way, especially Ron, Burnell, Ardell, Carolyn, Kevin, and others we name before you. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, God of the seasons, in the midst of summer, give us refreshment, renewal, and new opportunities, even as we continue to face the consequences of COVID-19. We pray for those who cannot take the rest they need as they treat and combat this virus. Help us care for and respect one another in these days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of life, forgive our selfish and self-centered ways. Remind us that you have called us to the joy and blessing of community. Lead us to unity and peace, seeing differences as blessings which enrich our lives. Lord, in your mercy, in the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us 
us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you, be gracious to you, and the Lord look upon you with favor and give you